Okay, what we want to go on to next uh, is sort of an application or two, which is to say, uh, suppose that we go back to our very simple law and uh, we take account of Coulomb collisions. And what we in particular want to do is the response of a plasma to an applied electric field. Uh, so response of a plasma to an applied E field. Now, what happens is that, of course, the electric field will cause the electrons to accelerate. But then Coulomb collisions, you know, so the electron fluid would kind of try to move. But Coulomb collisions are going to try to hold the fluid back. Ions are going to be more or less stationary because they don't respond to the electric field. They're too massive. So the electrons try to move collisions, Coulomb collisions kind of pull them back. So uh, the electrons, basically the E field, electric field, uh, causes electrons to flow with velocity or something, flow speed V sub E. Um, and the ions are too massive to respond. So then if we go back to our momentum balance equation, we have then Me Ne dV E dt is equal to the Lorentz force Ne QE E. And uh, we'll put B equals 0 for a moment, uh, just for simplicity here. And so there's no Lorentz force, uh, B, no V cross B Lorentz force. And finally, there's no pressure gradient, but there is the Coulomb collisional relaxation, Me, Ne, nu E, times the electron flow velocity. Now, we'd like to kind of know for equilibrium, not bother with transients, uh, how long would it take transient relaxation? Well, typically any time long compared to the electron collision time which was 60 microseconds or something like that. So tau E of order, you know, say 10 to 100 microseconds in typical laboratory plasmas around campus, let's say. Uh, so anyway, uh, we're, we're interested in equilibrium. So what we can do is then solve for the flow velocity induced by the electric field by just dividing through. So what we find is that the electron flow velocity induced by the electric field is then QE over Me nu E times the electric field. And what is this relation called? Well, this is a mobility relation. It's the mobility of the electrons induced by the electric field. And the coefficient of mobility is called the mobility coefficient, mu sub E times the electric field. So mu E is defined equal to uh, QE over Me nu E, and notice it's actually a negative quantity, so it's minus E over Me nu E, and it's known as the electron mobility. You know, how, how much can the electrons move in response to the electric field? Now, what we set out to do, though, is we'd like to know, say, what current we draw because we're going to derive Ohm's law out of this, okay, in response to the electric field. So how would we calculate the current? Well, that would be the sum over species of N sub E uh, or Nj, Qj, Vj. And so this would be minus N sub E, well, let me do it, N sub E, Qe, Ve, and then plus N sub I, Q sub I, Vi. But we're going to say that, you know, the ions are immobile. They're just sitting around. They don't respond to the electric field. So it's only really the electrons. And so this becomes then Ne, Qe. Now for the electron flow velocity induced by the electric field, we have the mobility. But, you know, we'll just go ahead and stick it in. So it becomes Qe squared over Me nu E. And this is all a coefficient times the electric field. 
And what is that coefficient? Well, that's current equals something times electric field. So that's Ohm's law. Okay? And so what we identify this is sigma E, sigma then being the electrical conductivity. And I think I better write that out on the next page. So the electrical conductivity of a plasma and I should say by the way for frequencies much less than the electron collision frequency because you remember we had to be in equilibrium relative to relative to the collisional drag uh, collisional uh, damping rate uh, then that electrical conductivity is given by n sub e QE squared is now just E squared over ME nu E. And this electron collision rate is actually just nu EI, the electron ion collision rate. It's not nu EE, nu, uh, so here nu E equals nu EI. And you, some people might say, well, it's really nu EE, but Electron-electron collisions are momentum conserving. There's the same amount of momentum in the electron distribution function as a whole after a Coulomb collision between two electrons as there was before. I didn't lose any momentum, whereas electron-ion ones exchange momentum from the electrons into the ions so, and jiggle the ions just a little bit off their immobile background. So this is the electrical conductivity of a plasma rather sort of important formula. And uh, let's uh, make some notes on this. The first one is that, remember our electron collision frequency, if we look back here, okay, it's proportional to what kind of plasma parameters? It's proportional to the density and, uh-huh, should have been a V-thermal cubed. Uh, to be thermal cubed on the next line properly. Uh, and there's a temperature, one over uh, V thermal cubed, one over V thermal cubed, or alternatively, that would be a TE, electron temperature, to the three halves power. Okay? So the, ele the electron collision frequency is then proportional to the electron density divided by TE to the three halves power. So if I put this in, Okay, uh, into this formula, the N sub E actually cancels out. And so the electrical conductivity of a plasma does not depend upon the plasma density, but it does depend upon the electron temperature. Now, alternatively, okay, eta, which would be equal to 1 over sigma, the plasma resistivity instead of the conductivity, that would be proportional to Te to the minus 3 halves. So high temperature plasmas have very high electrical conductivity or very low resistivity. And in fact, a kilovolt plasma turns out to have a, an electrical conductivity very close to that of a copper bar, it turns out. It's a pretty good conductor, uh, even though it's a gas, ionized gas. So um, at Te of order 1 kilovolt, eta of order eta copper at room temperature or so. Now, there is a, a subtlety about all this business uh, having to do with the electron, electron collisions and the electron ion collisions. So my second note is about uh, electron, electron collision effects change the numerical coefficient, which is unity here, okay, because I chose the collision frequency to have the 4 over 3 root pi in it, it turns out. So anyway, change the numerical coefficient. I want to describe that a little bit, what happens there. The idea is that you remember, um, so let's call this numerical coefficient in 
uh, electrical plasma electrical conductivity. Now, you remember that we said that um, the collision frequency was for any given particle within the distribution function was proportional to 1 over V cubed. So high energy electrons, high speed electrons, are not going to feel very much collisions. Okay? So you can sort of imagine the electric field, uh, the E field, will pull on high energy electrons, high speed electrons, the most. So what this means is that it won't be that we'll just get a, all the electrons acquire a given velocity, you know, because the electric field is pulling on it but we'll get a distortion of the distribution function that says the higher energy electrons are trying to carry the current. Okay? So the distribution function will be are rather uh, strongly distorted toward the high energy side. Now, on the other hand, electron-electron collisions are going to say, no, no, I think it ought to be a Maxwellian distribution function, and so they're going to try to relax it back. So the basic point is this effect that, uh, that the high energy particles are more easily affected by the electric field means that this, this will actually increase the conductivity because the high energy electrons will carry the current and they have less collisions. Um, and if they have less collisions, in some sense, the proper average will be a little bit smaller than the Maxwellian average I took before. So this will increase sigma. But the problem is that um, but electron-electron collisions relax back, uh, relax uh, distribution towards the Maxwellian. They can't directly influence the momentum exchange, but they try to th relax the distribution function uh, uh, toward a Maxwellian. And this will sort of reduce the sort of average energy electrons that are carrying the current. And so this tends to reduce a little bit sigma. So you get this. So electron ion collisions be, or turn out to be proportional to the ion charge because it's, if you go back to our formulas here, it's um, 4 pi ni zi squared. But on the other hand, if I was doing electron-electron collisions, I'd get Ne e squared, uh, whereas electron-electron collisions are proportional to unity or something, not proportional to z sub i. Maybe I should say z, z sub i to the zero. So therefore, there will be some balance between these two uh, effects. Uh, and in the limit of large z, large ion charge, then electron ion collisions are the dominant process, dominant Coulomb collision scattering process, and electron-electron collisions would be rather unimportant. So when you do a, a fancy uh, kinetic analysis, what you find is that the electrical conductivity is some factor, which I'm going to write as Z lambda naught naught, an additional factor of a different type, it turns out, N, uh, of Z, times the standard factor, N sub E, e squared, over m sub e nu e. And it turns out this uh, coefficient, z lambda naught naught of z, um, can be worked out, and it's 1 plus 2.966z plus, it's, it's a real nice number, um, 0.753z squared and then divided by 1 plus 1.198z 1 plus 0.222z squared. Uh, in 722, we work out uh, this sort of thing. And the perhaps interesting cases, which are often 
used, quoted, or discussed, are that it becomes one, this factor becomes 1.95 if z sub i is equal to 1, and we have a rather equal balance between these electron, electron, electron ion collision effects. On the other hand, if we got rid of ion collision effects entirely, uh, I'm sorry, electron, electron collision effects entirely by causing the electron ion effects to dominate, then this numerical factor turns out to be 32 over 3 pi, which is 3.4, it turns out. So in other words, the Spitzer conductivity is scaling-wise exactly what we had derived before by our simple, you know, we got flow uh, uh, that's slowed down or relaxed by Coulomb collisions, uh, but it's driven by the electric field, and that balance gave us an electrical resistivity, okay, or electrical conductivity. It's the same thing. But when you do a full kinetic theory, what you find is there's a numerical factor which ranges from about 2 to 3.5 uh, that takes account of the fact that you can, uh, that the high energy particles tend to carry the um, current uh, and, and so forth. Uh, this is, by the way, only uh, true or effective for in the absence of a magnetic field or um, in the um, along a magnetic field, uh, because if you go perpendicular to the field, remember, particles don't really move, they gyrate, okay? So it's only, where, it's only true in directions, uh, what's called sigma parallel, sigma perp, uh, where you go directly, turns out to be just the, the direct formula, n sub e, e squared over m sub e nu e. And the first person who derived, actually numerically, or by a numerical solution of the kinetic equation, this particular factor, z, lambda z, uh, was Lyman Spitzer of Pr Princeton in the um, 50s. And so this is, and colleagues, it turns out, and so this is often called the Spitzer uh, conductivity, electrical conductivity. And that means with these slight numerical factors here. Okay, so the next thing, uh, so this is the electrical conductivity. Most people just presume you have an electron-proton plasma, and so they use 2 as the numerical factor here. You know, 1.95 is, uh, for all intentional purposes, is about 2. I should have said, perhaps, also that the Coulomb collision frequency is only accurate to order 1 over log lambda, hence about 1 over 17, hence about 5% accuracy. Um, it gets more complicated for other terms. Okay, now, the next thing I want to do is, so this is the electrical conductivity of a plasma along the magnetic field or without a magnetic field. But let's now really kind of look at what happens in a magnetized plasma. So what I want to do is get in, in an Ohm's law uh, in a magnetized plasma. Um, and, by the way, we will do it in equilibrium. And I get my Ohm's law from the electron momentum balance. So electron momentum balance. And what I find is I have M E N E, again DVE by DT, is equal to N E Q E times E plus VE cross B. And now I could have minus pressure gradient, but um, we don't, we'll neglect that for the moment. But then I do have plus the friction term, the electron friction term, which is, of course, this thing we've been dealing with, M-E-N-E nu E VE. Um, now, we said we wanted equilibrium, so I'll take the inertia term and set it to zero. And again, all this means is that I'm on time scales long compared to the electron collision relaxation rate. So with all of that, um, we and, and I'll divide through by NQ, so we get zero is equal to E plus VE cross B. Uh, 
and then minus this friction force and divide through by NQ. So it becomes ME nu E divided by uh, QE. And then for the electron flow velocity, I can write this as the current density divided by N sub E, Q sub E, charge of the electrons. Remember, the current is just NQV, so I can write the flow velocity, only the electrons are moving here, as current density over NQ. And if I do that, then this becomes J, and this becomes N sub E, Q sub E squared. Now, what is this factor? ME nu E over NQ squared. Well, that's what we just had as the electrical resistivity, actually. But I will choose to write it as 1 over the electrical conductivity. So if I, you know, rework this, okay, put this on the other, or put this term on the other side, multiply through by the electrical conductivity, I then find that the current is equal to the electrical conductivity times E plus VE cross B. Uh, this should be 1 over sigma. J is equal to sigma E, or it's equal to eta. But uh, I've <laughs> I flip back and forth. But physically, or let me say conceptually, if you derive it right, you should think of it as a conductivity, it turns out, in a plasma. Because we apply an electric field, and there is a current that flows in response. And the current that flows in response is proportional to the electric field we apply, and that proportionality constant is the electrical conductivity. But we can also write it as 1 over the resistivity uh, for people who would prefer to write it in terms of the electric field. Now, if I had, uh, in addition, kept in the... Uh, so this is the Ohm's law. Kind of strange we got an extra V cross B in here uh, for a plasma. But we could have that this would be minus then grad PE... Uh, divided by electrical conductivity times NEQE uh, if we had um, a pressure gradient effect. And this is the Ohm's law in a magnetized plasma. What can we do with that? Well, uh, basically, uh, suppose we had a hot plasma. Uh, so high temperature plasma, okay? What do we mean by high temperature? Well, since my electrical uh, conductivity was proportional to Te to the 3 halves, what we sort of mean is sigma goes to infinity, very high number, and eta tends to go to zero. What does our Ohm's law become then? Well, it turns out for electrons, it becomes simply E plus V cross B is equal to zero. And that has solutions, if you wish, that the perpendicular flow velocity of electrons is equal to E cross B over B squared. All electrons flow with the E cross B velocity. But it also has as a constraint that if I took the parallel component, I'd better have that the parallel electric field goes to zero. So there is not, we cannot allow a parallel electric field in a very high temperature plasma because the electrical conductivity is so large that a huge current would flow in response to that electric field and will cause it to nearly die out. What about on the ions? Well, you could also imagine the same sort of thing, and you would get VI perp is equal to E cross B over B squared as well. And that would give you then a perpendicular current, which goes to zero. On the other hand, if you have collisions on the ions, then you would have that the ion perpendicular velocity would be, say, less than the electron perpendicular velocity. This would lead to a perpendicular current in the 
uh, E cross B direction. Um, and does anybody know what that current is called? Well, that's a collision-induced current in an E cross B direction, and then, so this is called the Hall current, it turns out. If you have collisions causing the ions to not be moved quite with the electrons or any other process that causes that to happen. Okay, with that we'll conclude, and next time what we'll do is use some more of these relationships of Coulomb collisions, uh, how they induce net uh, Coulomb collision-induced transport through gyro motion uh, across field lines. That's called Coulomb, uh, classical Coulomb collisions or classical transport, and how, what the, how, the, how we expect the overall particle and energy confinement time of the plasma to be determined in terms of those cross-field diffusion rates.